Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video it's another replication episode and this one is more of a full video of how to open and close doors in online multiplayer so it's replicated for server and all clients. So if I hit play I'll show you what we're going to make today. So as you can see I've got two doors over here just an example to show you it works with more than one. If I go over to this door, press E, server on the right, client on the left, it opens and closes on both and the same with this door over here as well. And even if the client was the one to open and close these doors, it still works for both the server and client, as you can see here, and obviously we can walk through these doors after opening and closing them like so. Uh, so this is what we're going to make today, a nice little system for opening and closing the doors in multiplayer online with it perfectly replicated and working like so. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to create a blueprint interface to keep this working nice and efficiently. And if you're not using interfaces, I would recommend it because again, mainly for efficiency and also in this code is going to help this work a lot better as well. So if you haven't already got that set up, I am going to show you how to do it here as well. But I do also have another video where I go a little bit more in depth in it, but let's set one up now. So to do that, we're going to right click, go to blueprints and then go to blueprint interface and add that there. And I'm simply going to name this interact interface because I want to use this interface to interact. So again, I've got a more in-depth video, but an interface is essentially a cheaper way of casting. So you don't actually have to cast. This allows us to communicate between different blueprints nice and easily. And as you see, it's a read only, so we don't actually do any code in here. It's just a set of functions. So this function here, I'm simply just going to call interact like so. We can compile, save, and close that. An interface is incredibly easy to set up. As you saw, I made it, renamed it, and that's it. So now what I'm going to do is open up my character blueprint to finish setting up the interaction side. So I'm going to go to content, third person BP, blueprints, third person character, but just do this in whichever character you want to be able to open the doors. So this could be one character or multiple characters, just any player and character you want to open the door. And in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit class settings up at the top, and you can see this is where we have interfaces. I'm going to press add under no interfaces and search for interact interface or the one which you just made, whatever you named it, and hit that there. And now we have this interact interface implemented into this character. So I'm going to go back to class defaults, compile and save. And what I'm also going to do is go to edit, project settings, go down to input and create an action mapping. So I'm going to hit the plus action mapping here, naming this one interact, and I'm going to set it to the E key. Set this to whatever key you want to interact with, so whether it's E, F, left mouse button, anything along those lines. Close that. Now back in the event graph of your character, we're going to right click and search for interact, or wherever you just named that action mapping. And make sure you get the action events interact, not anything else, the action events interact we have there. And out of pressed, what I'm going to do is get a for each loop with break. The reason I'm doing that is because I'm also going to right click and get overlapping actors, connecting the overlapping actors into the array there. Because this is how we're going to interact with the door. If we are overlapping it and we press E, we're going to interact with it. So again, this saves us from having to do this in every single blueprint, for example, the door, an item we want to pick up, anything like that. We can just do it once in the character blueprint, not over and over again. Class filter, I'm going to set as actor, so if we're overlapping any actor. And the array element, what I'm going to do, is come out and get does implement interface and the interface is going to be our interact interface that we made earlier because again we only want to interact with the object or the door or whatever it is if it implements this interact interface and because this is a boolean and we want to see if it's true or false we want to hold down b and left click to get a branch the return value is a condition connecting the branch into the loop body there so it's going to check for every actor we are overlapping to see if it is something we want to interact with if it is, we're going to come off of true and interact with it. So we come out of array element and we can get interact. We want to get the interact message there like so. And this is just going to call the function of interact in the blueprint we are trying to interact with, so the one we're overlapping currently. And what we're going to do is we're going to come back to this part later on as we do still need to finish this off after we've set up the door. So I'm going to compile, save, and come back to this later. And now I'm going to set up the door BP. So I'm going to minimize this, go back to my door folder where I want to set this up, and then create the door. So I'm going to right click, go to blueprint class, get an actor, and I'm going to name this door BP, like so, opening it up straight away. And I'm just going to set up a very simple door, so I'm going to add a static mesh, naming this door SM for door static mesh, 
and I'm going to set this to the starter content door which we have by default. Not the door frame, sorry, just the door. And what I'm also going to do is double click to open it up because by default this door doesn't have any collision for some very odd reason. So what you need to do is change the collision complexity to use complex collision as simple. That way you can now walk into the door, not through it. And that's when it's closed by the way, because by default you'll just be able to walk straight through a solid object, which obviously makes no sense. So I'm going to close that and finish setting up the door. What we need to do is have a box collision in which the player needs to be in that area to open and close the door. So I'm going to add a component and add a box collision, move this into position I want and then also just resize it to the size I want as well for essentially again where the player needs to be in order to interact. So I think that's going to be good for me, the player needs to be here to interact with the door. So that's going to be good, I'm going to compile, save and go over to the event graph again I'm going to delete these three nodes. What we also need to do is again implement the interact interface into this blueprint so we can interact with it. So we're going to do the same thing of going to class settings, no interfaces, add, and then search for interact interface like so. And now we have it on here very simply. And now to actually use it, you can see under here we have interfaces and interact. That's the function we made inside the interface. So I'm going to right click on it and implement function. And now you can see we have event interact here. So when we fire off this interact here, it is going to fire off this event because it is for this blueprint. And this event is obviously where we want to open the door. So out of this, I'm going to get a flip-flop. So it toggles between values of A and B, A being open, B being closed. And out of A, I'm going to add a timeline because I want to smoothly open the door. So I'm going to use a timeline to do that. And I'm just going to name this door timeline like so. A going into play and B going into reverse. Because to open it, we just want to play it normally. And then to close it, you don't need to create a separate animation. You can just do the opposite of opening, so reverse it. So again, keeping it nice and simple. Then I'm going to double click the door timeline to open it up, set the length to one, whatever length you want it to be. This is just how long it's going to take for the door to fully open. So one second is good for me. Then we're going to add a float track, naming this door track, as that also makes sense. Then we're going to right click on the track, add key to curl float with a time of zero and a value also of zero. Right click, add another key with a time of your max length that you have up here. So for me that is one, and a value also of one. And make sure the value is one. I'm gonna compile, save, and then close that timeline as that's all we need to do here. Simply it's gonna go from zero to one over the length of the timeline. And the reason we're doing that is because now we're gonna right click and get a lerp float, so just a normal lerp there. And the door track going into the alpha, because it's gonna use the value of zero to one to go between the values of A and B. And A and B in this lerp are going to be our open and close values. So A is closed, which is 0, B is open, which for me is going to be 110. Now I know that just because I've done doors so many times, but the way to figure it out is you go in, select your door static mesh, and just rotate it and see what the value is for where you want it to open. So I want it to open there, which is 110 on the Z, as you can see up here. But you may want it to open all the way, which is 180 obviously, or halfway, which is 90, or just again, choose whatever value you like for how far you want the door to open. Again, 110 is gonna be good for me. And now what you would normally do with the door is you would rotate the door static mesh in this blueprint. But we can't do that for multiplayer because it's only gonna work for the server. So what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna create an event dispatcher. So we're gonna hit the plus event dispatcher here, and I'm gonna name this open door. And this is also to allow us to communicate between this blueprint and our character blueprint without having to use a cast or an interface because this is even more efficient now. So what I'm going to do is after creating it, I'm going to select it and up at the top right, I'm going to add an input naming this door SM or door static mesh. And I'm going to change this from a Boolean to a scene component. And we want a scene component object reference there. I'm going to add another input naming this door angle, very simply like so. And this is going to be a float value. And then we can drag and drop the event dispatch on here and call it, connecting that into the update of the timeline like so, with the door angle being the return value of that lerp and the door SM being our door static mesh we added in earlier. So now when we want to open or close the door off of the update, so whenever this timeline is firing off and changing this value, it's also going to be firing off and calling this event dispatcher. And this event dispatcher is going to be firing off the code for actually opening the door 
in our character blueprint. Because in order to use replicated custom event nodes, which is what we're going to do, it has to be in a player or character controlled blueprint. So it can't be in our door BP, it has to be in our player blueprint because the player is controlling it, so that way it can replicate to run on server and run on clients. So I hope that makes sense as to why we're doing it in the character blueprint, not the door blueprint. But once you've got this set up, we can compile, save, and go back to our character blueprint like so, and we can finish setting this up. So like I said, we had some more to set up on our interact code here, and we're gonna do that now. After the interact, we're gonna come out of the array element again for the for each loop, and we're going to cast to our door, which for me is the door BP like so, connecting that into interact. And then as door BP, what we're going to do is bind event to open door, or whatever you named the event dispatcher in here like so, which obviously I named mine open door. And so what that does is now any event we attach to this is gonna fire off when we fire off this event dispatcher. So every time this goes off, the event we attach to this will also go off, which again is gonna be our replicated custom event nodes. So that's gonna work perfectly. What we can also do is drag out of the cast failed and go into the break of the for loop with break because we don't need to keep firing off the loop once we've decided what we want to interact with. And I'm gonna double click these to get some rewrite nodes, connecting that one there, and also out of the bind event to door is also gonna go into that reroute there to go into the break of the for each loop. So I hope that makes sense. This is how we're gonna interact with our door efficiently. So now the last thing to set up is actually opening and closing the door because we've set up the interaction and all the logic there, but we need to fire it off. So I'm gonna right click and add a custom event, naming this open door on server. And I'm gonna hit replicate and change it to run on server. Now you can see we have this red box up here. I'm gonna drag out of that and go into the event of the bind event to open door. So when the event dispatcher fires off, it's gonna fire off this custom event here. And this will make more sense in a second when we finish the code. I'm gonna select the open door on server, custom event that we have here, and we need to add some inputs, but it looks like I can't add those once I've done that. So we'll disconnect it by holding alt and left clicking on it, select it again and add some inputs. So I'm gonna add the first input of door SM, the same we have on our event dispatcher, changing this again to a scene component object reference, and another one of door angle, again, like we did earlier, once again, being a float variable like so. Now we can reconnect that in there like so. So again, it's gonna fire off when the event dispatcher fires off. Now underneath this, we're gonna right click and add another custom event, naming this one open door everywhere or on client, anything that you wanna name it. And we're gonna change this from not replicated to multicast, which again runs this everywhere, or as you see there, executes on all, so it does it on the servers and all the clients. So this will do it on the server, this will do it on the client. We again need to add in the door angle, which is a float, and the door SM, which is the scene component, like so. And we're doing that so we know which door we want to open and to what angle it needs to be opened at currently. Now out of open door on server, what we're gonna do is call function open door everywhere. So open door on server goes to open door everywhere or open door on client, whatever you named it, connecting in the door SM there and the door angle there as well. I'm also just gonna rearrange those like that. And then the open door everywhere wants to actually open the door. So we're gonna drag out of door SM and set relative rotation because we just want to rotate it and we only want to rotate it on the Z. So we're gonna right click new rotation, split the structure pin, and door angle is gonna go into the new rotation Z like so. And now this should work perfectly for us. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna press E and if we're overlapping the door, what's gonna happen is it's gonna fire off the interact and also create a binding of the event dispatcher. When it fires off the interact, it's gonna either open or close the door playing this timeline, which actually reminds me we need to double click this and tick replicated. So it's a good job I was checking through this because obviously replicated to replicate it, that makes sense. And each time this fires off for the timeline, so it's updating, it's gonna be moving between the values of open and close and firing off the event dispatcher. And when the event dispatcher fires off, it's gonna fire off the server custom event, which will fire off the all custom event, which will rotate the door, which again, we've set up through the event dispatcher like so, which is how we're communicating between all the different blueprints. So now we can minimize this and drag in some doors in here like so to test this out. 
So let me hit play and show you that this is working. So I'm going to go over and I'm going to open this door. It's opened on the client and the server and we can walk through it like so on both client and server and now we can close the door as well like so. And again I'll show you with this one. Let me move the client just to have a look. You see this one is also going to open and close perfectly like so for both server and client. So this works perfectly. So I think that'll be it for this video So we've done everything we want to do. We've set it up so we have a door which works on multiplayer. So we can open and close the door whether we are server or client, anything like that. It just completely works. It's replicated perfectly to work for online multiplayer. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.